Got it. Thank you, Susan. Let's go to Matt Whitaker right now, the former uh, Trump administration acting U.S. Attorney General. So he actually knows what he's uh, speaking about on these legal issues that I try to pontificate on. Uh, Matt, maybe you can help me with this Delaware Chance record. It has a long uh, and established record of normally uh, siding with the company that, that's shafted. Uh, not all the time, but, but a good many times where you make a deal, you commit to that deal, you just can't worm out of the deal. How do you see this going? Yeah, Neil, good to be with you today. Well, a lot of this boils down to contract law uh, at the end of the day. And, you know, the Chancery Court in Delaware has the expertise. Uh, obviously, many corporations are formed in Delaware for the one of the reasons is because of the well-developed corporate law. Uh, but in this case, you know, there's several things. And as a lawyer, uh, usually you don't pay as much attention to that last section um, of the contract. But in this case, the specific performance question is going to be front and center in the contract. And can, um, you know, Twitter compel Elon Musk to buy it? And ultimately, I, I think the, the answer is probably yes. This court has compelled other uh, purchasers to follow through with the transaction if their arguments um, of breach are not strong enough. And in this case, um, you know, there's an inside and outside game going on, Neil. As you know, uh, there's both a PR campaign, uh, but ultimately it's the judge in the black robe that's going to decide who has the stronger argument and whether or not, you know, either Elon needs to pay the billion dollars or buy the company. And it's uh, going to be a fascinating case to watch, but I think this judge is going to be under a lot of uh, public pressure uh, because it is such a high-profile case. Now, um, it kind of ends at the Delaware court, right, Matt? In other words, uh, this is one of those situations where they're the ultimate arbiter on this. Uh, it, it's not the kind of thing, for example, you go to the Supreme Court to, to make your pitch, right? Yeah, this is a state court question. It's under Delaware law. The contract's going to be interpreted. I'm sure the choice of law section, another one of those uh, things in the contract, uh, not a lot of attention is paid to, but the choice of law is Delaware, so it's a state court in Delaware. And the ultimately, I guess you could go to the Delaware Supreme Court, but that will end there. There's no federal uh, review of this. Um, you know, Matt, uh, you, you know both personalities fairly well. I don't know how well you know Elon Musk. You certainly work for President Trump. Uh, there's no you know, loss of goodwill here uh, in any minimum way between uh, the former president and, and the world's richest man. They've both been going at each other. Uh, a lot of bad blood there. Uh, where and how did it start? Yeah, I, I think it's been one of those things that has developed over time. I think, you know, the president had people like Elon Musk and Zuckerberg and, right. and Jack Dorsey come to him when he was president and, and, you know, and were very kind to him uh, because of the position that he occupied. Since then, a lot of those folks have turned on the president. He doesn't like that. Uh, you know, there's there's uh, he prefers loyalty and folks that, you know, when they say one thing to his face, they follow through uh, in, you know, behind his back. And in this case, I think Elon has been very critical of Donald Trump. Now, Elon Musk has also suggested that the left has moved so far away from where he stands that he's now uh, comfortably in the you know conservative wing of American politics. And I say welcome. It's very judiciously answered. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Matt, thank you very much. Good <laughs> seeing you again. Uh, Matt Whitaker is the uh, former Trump administration right. acting U.S. Attorney General. Some developments from across the pond I want to share you with you right now in the search for a successor to Boris Johnson, uh, the uh, soon-to-be former Prime Minister of Great Britain. Right now, the inside track seems to be going uh, to Rishi Sunak, who is topping the first round of voting among Tories, the, the Conservative Party, if you will. You might remember that name because he was chancellor of the Exchequer, which is the equivalent of our, probably our Treasury Secretary. Uh, he was among the first prominent members of the Johnson team to resign, saying that he had lost confidence in his boss and uh, his leadership of the party in the country. Now he seems to have the edge in early voting. There are waves of this from what I understand. But for now, uh, the guy who quit might soon be the guy in charge. Stay with us.